So a lot of it has to do with uh, mentality. Okay. I feel pretty comfortable with uh, my fundamentals and like, you know, inputting what I want to most of the time. <laughs> I can't be perfect, but um, mm -hmm. so like I tend to two or three games and then just like completely lose focus or like the ability to focus on the game. Okay. And I guess the uh, autopiloting plays into that too. That's that's another one of the things I have okay. uh, written down. So. I guess my first question is, what can I do to just help, like, I guess in the middle of a game, like, hey, you're, you're autopiloting, like... So is this, I need to ask as far as the setting, is this in a tournament, or is this playing, like, grind session slash friendlies? Just in general, like, at any time I'm playing, really. Well, there is a difference, because if you're playing in friendlies, there's a chance that you're, or a very strong chance that you're not nervous at all, so it's much easier yeah. to get out of this if you're in friendlies, versus if you're in a tournament, there's much more to it than just say, oh, like, just don't worry because <laughs> that's, not, that's yeah, not the true. answer so whether or not you're in a tournament or in friendlies or not the number one thing i would do whether you are thirsty or not is get a huge glass of water that is possibly the number one game breaker in the entire world with regards to having better mental focus because having water is basically like putting oil in your car if you know anything about cars if a car doesn't have oil it does not work it will literally explode mm -hmm. so same thing for yourself you don't have to be dehydrated to be thirsty Right. Or to feel like your 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 autopilot is kicking in because you feel almost like you have zero patience to retain anything. And you're just basically playing in a mind mind numbing or brain dead way. I was having a, uh, a grind session with a player the other day. And it's like for me, I was just playing stupid. And I said, I told him, like, I'm literally just playing dumb. I'll be right back I'm gonna go get some water. I did that. And I came back and everything felt like it was easier. I, I felt like he stopped trying is what it felt like because I got so much more focused. And it's like, no, okay, I, I was literally just doing neutral get up into everything and getting hit by get up attack and up smash and neutral B and all kinds of stupid stuff because I just didn't care to believe that he was actually a good player and I had to try and I had to focus. So number one, huge glass of water. It sounds like that's too easy of an answer, but realistically, that's probably the best answer I'll give you all night <laughs> with regards to trying to get out of autopilot. So the second thing too, is if you are playing in friendlies, um, this is where taking a break comes into play to say, give yourself a chance to actually, if you want to try and break down what your opponent is doing, you can do that as far as taking a break, but just taking a mental break and standing up for a second, because you actually can. In a tournament setting, this is where preparation comes into play massively, where you can't simply just go get a glass of water because you feel like it. In between sets, you can, whatever. But to say, oh, I'm just going to stop in the middle of a set and just like stand up and then not play you can't really do that but in a tournament as far as preparation let's say if you let's say you're fighting against a character we'll we'll do two different timelines if you're not prepared to fight a character it's very easy to revert to your instincts to say okay i know what i i know what i can do and i know what my character is capable of and i'm going to just try and catch this person slipping on like the basics of making mistakes so the basis of making mistakes for them would be like smash attacks on shield missing grabs dash attacking your shield rolling like the very basic basics right however if you're fighting a very good player there's a good chance that they're not going to make a dumb basic mistake like that where you can capitalize based on your character turning the game into a one player game where it's like oh you smash my shield i can just grab you and put on 60 because they're, they're playing safe and they're playing smart you're not going to get that obvious chance to do something However, if you are very prepared for a matchup, you can see certain things where someone is making a, in quotations, mistake, but the average person wouldn't see it as that because they didn't know it was a mistake. I'll say, for example, a character like, I'll say Greninja. A Greninja player has horrible out-of-shield options, so you can abuse the crap out of his shield. But if you autopilot, let's say, nair onto shield into up tilt, you're going to get punished for that over and over and over again basically forever but if you don't autopilot you can do nair drag down into grab or tomahawk grab instead and get those punishes for them staying in shield so rather than like let's say sometimes you might not even get punished but you might just not be doing any damage so you go for like let's say listen to this they stay in shield and they just roll away and they just run away and then you got nothing right so being prepared to say okay i know for a fact they're not going to swing out of shield they're not going to rising there out of shield they're not going to up smash me out of shield I think drop shield jab for them is frame 14. So they're not going to do that either. Especially if you could, like, if you were to go like this into this and they drop shield and try to jab you, you're going to catch them every single time. So it's not worth it for them. So I would be preparation as far as that. Um, autopiloting for my, for my experience, for the most part, it, it comes into play when you don't know what to do. There is the brain dead side, side of things where you're super tired or you don't care. There is that. But it's like, if you don't know what to do, you're going to do what you do know what to do, if that makes any sense. As far as like, if I know I can get like, let's say this into this, I'm just going to keep doing this, right? 
and I'm going to try and get my combo like this. And it's my autopilot option, or my autopilot is, let's say, I don't know, jump in with like a down air, dash away, side B. I'm just going to hope that they don't shield. But if someone is very shield heavy because either they have an incredibly good shield, they could be two things. They can have a terrible out of shield game and they're just shielding because you're making mistakes and they're just going for grabs. Or they have a tremendously good out of shield game where they're going to run underneath you, like let's say cloud, run in, shield, up be out of shield over and over again. If you just don't pay attention to the fact, let's say uh, as far as preparation for a character matchup, if you don't know that a character has either a super good out of shield or a super bad out of shield or the reasons why they would be uh, favoring their shield so much, you're going to jump on the shield all day and either going to get killed for it or you're not going to get any damage at all, like I said before. So that would be the other part of it as well. It's it's obviously paying attention to what your opponent is doing as far as, like, let's say, if you're fighting a character, I'll say like Pit, his landing back air has, I think it's either nine frames or eight frames of landing leg, which is basically nothing. It's a blink of an eye. So you can go like this and run away for free or you can go like this, dash away side B, which has super armor, or you can go like landing back air, rising back air. But if he has rising back air, then he's trapped in the air. And if you don't know this stuff, you're going to try and grab his landing back air, you're going to try and side B his landing back air, and you're going to get destroyed. So you have to look this stuff up yourself, okay? And whether it's, let's say, watching sets of someone playing as Pit, or watching sets as Falco versus Pit, or practicing against Pit yourself, going into the Pit Discord, and I'm just using him as an example. It could be anybody, really. These are the types of things you have to do to make sure that you're not autopiloting because you actually have a, a mission or a goal during the game that is not just win. I'm glad you brought in the uh, like the falling there uphill. That's definitely my number one uh, go-to <laughs> autopilot. 100. percent So here's another thing too. Is I'm gonna put a video out on this because it's actually broken. Um, for Falco, I've never ever used rising there in the last three years as a tool at all in neutral because in my opinion, I've always thought that it was trash. Reason being is because it doesn't really combo into anything unless you get a hitbox where you let's say get full momentum forward nair and they're basically like inside your character model or slightly behind you if you get that hitbox of nair then you can get that into another short hot fair drag down into up tilts grabs down tilts whatever you want so rising nair is it's the frame three option as far as the actual hitbox so frame six off the ground out of shield is not really that great but if you're to jump at someone like this you can stuff out so much and also it keeps your character so much more mobile because you're not trapped doing this, which is super slow if you miss. You're like playing leapfrog out here and putting yourself in tons of leg on the ground. When you, just, you shouldn't be doing this in neutral, right? Obviously not that much, but it's so slow to do that compared to doing this, right? Also with this too, this is frame 3 versus this is frame 7, right? Or frame 6 versus frame 10, right? This is so much faster. You can fade back with it. It has a way, way more generous hitbox below it and above. Right? So this hits through platforms too. So stand on the platform for a second. So if I go like this, well, first of all, I don't think I can even hit you on this platform. Yeah. On Battlefield, it like hit, it hits you very slightly and it like pops you up. Right? But here, I can get this and actually send you off stage. So for me, if I ever try and hit somebody through a platform, like let's say it's Battlefield or uh, Smashville or here, PS2, I'm going to use Nair if someone's trapped on a platform. Because if I hit them, I don't want to like pop them up and have them have a chance to air dodge or double jump out. Unless I'm going for a specific read. I'd rather just hit them and knock them off stage and have the consistency with Nair too. Right? And there's a reason to do that type of stuff as well. As far as like getting an edge guard situation, ledge trap situation, not letting them land on shield or land on platforms for free. Right? It's just small stuff like that. But you have to know it's the matchup part of things, but also just knowing for yourself, why would I use Nair versus Fair? This is just research for yourself to say i'm not going to autopilot fair because fair is actually hurting me because i'm either missing or i'm getting reversed or my opponent's getting out of situations for free where i could have gotten the uh, offstage situation or even killed them right? like these things are just it's it turns into being a knowledge-based game 100 percent